and, and Eve, when they sinned against the Lord, they gave the power to the devil. They gave the rulership to the enemy. So now after that fall, now every human being that now was birth on earth will come under the curse of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the Lord could not just descend anyhow. There had to be a place that is set up for him. There had to be a place that is consecrated. There had to be a place that is set up for the glory of the Lord to be able to descend. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So there were a lot of instructions that the Lord gave that were more on the physical uh, 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 demonstration. Hallelujah. So the Lord needed a, a, a covenant of blood. Hallelujah. You know that during the time in the, in the Old Testament when people have, have sinned before the Lord, they had to use certain animals to offer them to give to the priest so that the priest will, will repent on their behalf and they will transfer all those sins unto that animal and they will send that animal into the wilderness. Hallelujah. And there were certain sacrificial offerings that were required. Hallelujah. Even in Leviticus where the Lord is speaking of the of when the women give birth to a child of a boy or a girl. He is also emphasized the importance of circumcision that once uh, 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 the, the mother gives birth to the child and the child once is eight days old the child needs to be circumcised hallelujah that is in leviticus chapter 12 so when you read about it verse 1 up to verse 13 i presume you will understand that that law was still being practiced even after uh, genesis chapter 17 hallelujah so people had to adhere to that practice that the Lord said was a sign of agreement between him and male. All humanity, if I may put it, to include all genders. Hallelujah. So that was a sign of his agreement between God and man. Hallelujah. The blood covenant. So when they cut off the foreskin, there will be blood that will come out. So that blood was a covenant between men and God. That is why the Lord chose for them to cut off the foreskin so that the blood will come out. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood, whether the blood is of a human being, whether the blood is of Jesus. Why would God send Jesus to come in the New Testament to come and die for us if the blood is not important? Why would the devil use human sacrifice and spill blood why would devil worshippers drink the blood if the blood has no significance there is power in the blood there is life in the blood so the lord gave instruction our forefather abraham to keep that covenant among the, the jews among the israelites then for them to show their covenant with god to show that they have been separated for god the blood needed to be spilled. The blood needed to come out. Because there is life in the blood. So when life is in the blood, that means it is the way of them what? Giving their life to God. The covenant was created between male, mankind and God. So that's why the Lord gave that instruction for them to what? To do circumcision. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. But today the Lord is not talking about that covenant. Because in the New Testament, Jesus Christ died for us. He spilled his own blood for us. So there is no more need of circumcision. Maliba kasaya mendeleboshi amandarababosa. Now someone may be asking why God did not say women need to be to be circumcised. Hallelujah. But because women, they go through menstruation cycle. They always milabakasuya, mika namasaya. They are always releasing the blood. Hallelujah. 
So there was no way the Lord could give an instruction for male children, for female children to be circumcised because the Lord knows that every man, a woman, Himalabasuya, they release blood. There is always cleansing. There is always that consecration process which is in the physical. Because mind you, when God gave this instruction, this was on the physical capacity. This was on the religious act, the practice. It was not from the spiritual. Like today, the Lord is more on the spiritual perspective. He's not talking about that circumcision of the Old Testament. But today, he's talking about the circumcision of the New Testament. That when Jesus spilled his blood for us, when he shed his blood for us, that needed to be done one time. And there is no more need for any blood spilled. There is no more need for you to show that you are a child of God by being circumcised. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Because you are even told that when Jesus, he did adhere to the law. He did adhere to the Lord because we are told that in Luke, um, I think it's Luke 21. Let's go. After eight days, Jesus was circumcised. So because he came to earth, he had to adhere to the rules and regulation of the Jews. As a Hebrew, he had to, to follow the laws. Hallelujah. So we are told that after eight days, he was circumcised. To God be the glory. He was circumcised. Glory, 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 glory. We are told that he was circumcised. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Okay, I'll search for it, Christian. But he was circumcised like all the, 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 the other children. He followed the same laws. Hallelujah. He followed the same laws like everybody else. So because he came and was, 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 was born on earth, so he needed to follow like everybody else and follow the laws that were placed there. Hallelujah. So he was brought into the temple and he was circumcised. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We'll search it. Uh, okay, let's continue. Now, there was no need for women to be circumcised. So I presume, that is my, that is my understanding, hallelujah, that the Lord didn't see the necessity for, ma for female children to be circumcised because he knew that there is a stage that they enter through where they go through that cleansing process of going through menstruation cycle, hallelujah. To God be the glory. So the Lord today is not talking about that circumcision. So after God appeared to, 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 to Abram, we are told that now in verse 23, now Abram, which is now Abraham, conducted the circumcision to all male, even those who were old. Mind you, he was 99 at that time when he performed circumcision because he needed to do that. Hallelujah. As the one who was leading what? The people of Israel, the Jews. So we are told in verse 3, Then Abraham gathered Ishmael and the male born in his camp and the slaves he had bought, so that they, 
So that day, Abraham circumcised every man and boy in this camp as God has told him to do. 24, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. Verse 25, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised. Verse 26, Abraham and his sons were circumcised on the same day. Verse 27, also on that day, all the men in Abraham's camp were circumcised, including all those born in his camp and all the slaves he had bought from other nations. Hallelujah. So they all yield to God's instruction. They were all circumcised. Hallelujah. To God be the glory according to God's instruction. But today the Lord is not talking about the circumcision of the physical. He's talking about the circumcision of the spiritual. Because now when we go to Philippians, okay. Philippians, okay. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 3. Okay, I'll just start from verse 1. My brothers and sisters, be full of joy in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. It will help you to be more ready. Verse 2. Watch out for those who do evil, who are like dogs, who demand to cut the body. Watch out for those who do evil, who are like dogs, who demand the cut, meaning those who demand circumcision as a sign of, of, of confirmation that you are a child of God. But yet they are doing evil. So the Lord noted that even though he gave people those religious practice for them to do circumcision, it never made them holy. They continued being wicked although they were circumcised. Although they already had a covenant with God, that blood covenant through circumcision. But they did not make them to be holy. They continued to do evil. So meaning the physical practices of things does not change the inner man of a man. It doesn't transform the spiritual being of a man, but it becomes a, 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 a ritual. People, they end up doing things. There are people even in the house of the Lord who do certain things. They become ritual. They don't have a, a relationship, a covenant with God. But the aim of God was to have a covenant with men far bigger than the physical act of circumcision. But he realized as time goes on that that it did not stop people from being wicked. It did not stop people from doing evil. So that means the first person that needs to be transformed is the inner man. Then the physical will, will follow the spiritual. While man is made of the spirit, the soul, and the body. So when we do things that are more of, 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 phys, of ritual, that are more of the physical practices, they are more inclined into the body. Now you will find that, as I said last time, that the body and the soul always fight against the spirit. So when we do all these ritual practices, they do not change the inner man. They do not change our character. It does not make our, our character and our attributes to be like Christ. But the minute the inner man is transformed by the renewal of the mind through the word of God, covenant with God, a, a reading the word of God, it transformed yourselves, the inner man get transformed and then the soul and the body become subdued under the spirit. So the Lord knew, picked up that as much as he gave all these a religious act that the Christian, the Jews had to follow, it didn't change the inner man, they still remain wicked. Because these were outside of the spirit, were practiced that were outside of the spirit. So today when the Lord is saying, are you circumcised? He's talking about spiritual circumcision. So in the New Testament, it is not important whether you are physically circumcised or not. But the minute you become a child of God, you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you become circumcised, but you must be circumcised through the spirit of the Lord. So let us continue to read. Verse 2 said, watch out for those who do evil, who are like dogs, who demand cut, who demand to cut the body. Verse 3, we are the ones who are truly circumcised. We worship God through his spirit. Hallelujah. And our pride is in Christ Jesus. We do not put trust in ourselves or anything we do. Hallelujah. So people were putting trust in ritual actions, in ritual practices, in religious practices. We are now living in that time where the churches are now being more in religious act, more into programs, more into, 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 into 
spiritual religious act where you know that okay because i go to church every sunday you think now you have a relationship with god but you don't know god you don't have a fellowship with god you don't pray you don't know you don't read the word of the lord you don't put yourself into consecration fasting and praying hallelujah but you think because you, you, you are going to church every day, you are partaking in every activity that is being done in the house of the Lord, and then you think you have a relationship with God? No. There are a lot of Christians who are doing religious acts, religious practices. They do not know God. They have no fellowship with God. They have no relationship with God. They don't even know Him. So the Lord realized that as much as people were keeping the laws, people were keeping the commandments, but they were wicked. There are a lot of Christians who are very faithful. They are there every Sunday. They are partaking in everything that is being done in the house of the Lord. They are there, but they are still wicked. Their heart is wicked. They don't forgive people. They keep offense. They are easily offended. They are jealous. They are envious. When they see somebody who's gifted, they, they become jealous. The spirit of jealousy, the spirit of hypocrisy that is in the house of the Lord, you cannot believe it. They are actors, they are actors, they pretend. They pretend to be holy. Some they even get to a stage where they pretend to be blessed, they pretend to be in the spirit because they've been doing this thing for years. So the Lord knew, picked up that people were more on the edge than the actual encounter with him. So, verse 3, we are the ones who are truly circumcised. We worship God through his spirit. And our pride is in Christ. Our pride is in Christ, not in our religious act. Not in what we are doing. Now you want to be recognized in everything that you do in the house of the Lord. Once you are not applauded, applauded for what you have done, then you get angry. The person says, I do this and that for the church, but nobody seems to recognize me. Why should you be recognized by men? If you are doing this into reverence to God, you are doing this to showing your love to God. Because when Christ came and died for us, we didn't pay anything for him to do that for us. He did it for us for free. So why when we come into the house of the Lord, we expect to be paid? When you play keyboard in the house of the Lord, you expect to be paid. When you play drums in the house of the Lord, you expect to be paid. These are all things that the Lord saw that the more he was giving them all these laws, it made them to reach a point of religious act, religious practices. Spirit of hypocrisy crept in into the house of the Lord. We do not put the trust in ourselves or anything we do because they were putting more trust in these religious acts, in these ritual things. Trusting that if I, 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 I offer certain sacrifice, then I'm exempt, exempted from this. You understand? If I'm circumcised, then I'm holy. Those who are not circumcised, they are not holy. Because you are circumcised. Because your family were from the descendants of Abraham. And they were told that once you are you circumcised, you become separated. Now you, are, you, are, you have a mark that you are a child of God. Now, besides the evil things that you are doing but you have the nerve of thinking that you are holy apart from others who are not Jews you have the nerve to think you are holy because you are circumcised and yet your spirit is filthy you are wicked and the person who is not circumcised is not wicked easily forgives, does not keep strife does not easily get offended, forgives people, is not envious, is not jealous, celebrates other people's success, but yet you call yourself a child of God because you are marked, because you are circumcised. So the Lord wanted people to move from the physical act and move to the spiritual act because that one is more powerful. We do not put trust in ourselves or anything we do. Verse 4, although I might be able to put trust in myself, if anyone thinks he has a reason to trust in himself, he should know that I have greater reason for trusting in myself. Verse 5, I was circumcised eight days after my birth, and I am from the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin. I am a Hebrew, and my parents were Hebrews. I had a strict view of the law, which is why I became a Pharisee. Verse 6, I was so enthusiastic, I tried to help the church. 
no one could find fault with the way I obeyed the Lord of Moses, laws of Moses. Verse 7, those, who, those things were important to me, but now I think they are worth nothing because, because of Christ. Hallelujah. This is Paul talking, who was killing Christian, who kept the laws of Moses. He was a scholar. He went and studied for him to become a Pharisee. So when you read the Bible, you, you see how these people who were called Pharisees were so pompous because of the law, of the scribes, the everything that they read about the laws of Moses. It made them to feel that they were exalted. They were far better than any other people. And anyone who did not follow the laws of Moses, they felt those were not people of God. Hallelujah. But now we are hearing the man who was a scholar, who knew all the laws, practiced it up to the core went to an extent of going and going an assignment of killing all the Christians that were not adhering to those laws. Verse 7, those things were important to me, verse 7. But now I think they are worth nothing because of Christ. Because when Christ came, he did away with all those things. Verse 8, not only those things, but I think that all things are worth nothing compared with the greatness of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. He said those laws are nothing compared to, the, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of him, I have lost all things. Because of him, I have lost all those things. And now I know they are worthless trash. Hallelujah. This is Paul. This allows me to have, this allows me to have Christ and to belong to him. Now I am right with God, not because I follow the laws, hallelujah, but because I believe in Christ. God, use, God uses to know Christ. Hey. God uses my faith to make me right with him. Verse 10, I want to know Christ and the power that raised him from the dead. I want to share in his suffering and become like him in his death. Verse 11, then I have hope that myself will be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This allows me to have Christ and to belong to him. Now I'm right with God. Not because I follow the law. Not because I follow the law of circumcision. But because I believe in Christ, hallelujah. That is why I'm saying in the New Testament, when Jesus came, he came to do away with all that laws. He came so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Not based on our religious act. Not based on our physical act. Not based on our circumcision. But we ought to be circumcised through the spirit of the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Then in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11. Also in Christ you had a different kind of circumcision. A circumcision not done by hands. Glory, glory, glory. It was through Christ's circumcision. That is his death. That you were made free from the power of your sinful selves. Hallelujah. Verse 12. When you were baptized... You were buried with Christ and you were raised up with him through his faith in God's power that was shown when he raised Christ from the dead. What raised Christ from the dead was the spirit of the Lord. So when the Lord is asking today, are you circumcised? He's asking, are you circumcised through the spirit of the almighty God? Because only the spirit of the Lord can circumcise you. There's a scripture that says when you, are, when, when, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are marked. You are marked. You are separated. We are told that in the Old Testament, the Lord said when he gave instruction to Abraham to circumcise all male, he said that that will make you a mark. You'll be set apart for me as my people and I as your God. That today I'm making a covenant with you. So when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is the start of the mark. And then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Then you are spiritually circumcised. You are spiritually set apart. For God, you have a mark on you that confirms that you are a child of God. Because you have made a covenant with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By separating yourself. Now a circumcision, we said, it is a cutting off of the foreskin. 
It is a separation of the foreskin to reveal, to reveal what must be there. Now, in the in the medical viewing, if you were to view a, a male organ of a man who is circumcised and a male organ of a male who is not circumcised, you will see the difference. The other part of the male organ that is not circumcised is, is closed up by the foreskin. But the one that is cut off, it is open, it is exposed. You can see the head of the male of the organ. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Glory to Jesus. So that means there is an unveiling that happens. There is a revealing that happens. There are moments you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and you are sealed with the mark of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you will be revealed who you are in Christ. You will know what you were called to do. But if there is no spiritual circumcision, circumcision you will not know who you are. You are still hidden by the foreskin. Glory. Glory. So there's a separation. So when God is speaking of spiritual circumcision, he's talking of the unveiling. He's talking of the revelation. He's talking of, 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 of the unveiling of your identity, of knowing who you are in Christ. He's talking about you being removed from darkness and being exposed to the light. As I'm saying that the foreskin, when it's cut off, it reveals the head of the male organ. But the one that is not circumcised, the, 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 the foreskin is still covering the head of the male of the organ. So in other words, when we move it into the spiritual explanation or spiritual revelation, the head of the male of the organ is still in darkness, is still under coverage. But the minute they are circumcised, there is foreskin is removed. There is an unveiling. We can see who, 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 who we can see the actual uh, 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 creation of the male organ. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So when we move this to the spiritual, you are now being unveiled. You are now coming into the light, being exposed of who you are. You are being revealed of your true self. So that is why the Lord today is saying, are you circumcised? We are not talking of the physical circumcision, but we are talking of the spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. When the Lord God Almighty, when the spirit of promise, that the Lord promised the disciples, when he, dis when he ascended to heavens, he said, I'm not leaving you alone. He says, go and wait for the spirit of promise who will come upon you. He will give you power to go and minister the gospel. Glory to Jesus. And to see our message, brethren, in Romans chapter 2. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. glory. In Romans chapter 2. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 2. Verse 25. If you follow the law, your circumcision has meaning. But if you break the law, it is as if you were never circumcised. Verse 26. People who are not Jews are not circumcised. But if they do what the law says, it is as if they were circumcised. Verse 27, you Jews have the, have, have the written law and circumcision, but you break the law. So those who are not circumcised in their bodies, but still obey the law, will show that you are guilty. Verse 28, they can do this because a person is not a true Jew if he is only a Jew in his physical body. True circumcision is not only on the outside of the body. Glory to Jesus. Verse 29, a person is a Jew only if he is a Jew inside. True circumcision is done in the heart by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Not by the written law. Such a person gets praise from God rather than from men or from people. Glory. Father, bless the reading of a word in Jesus' name. He says that, his, Paul is saying, the true circumcision is, is when, in verse 29, a person is a Jew only if he is a Jew on the inside. He says a true circumcision is done in the heart by the spirit. Not by the written law. 
because the Jews came to a point where they felt that they were much holier than thou. They felt that they were much better than any other people because of their circumcision practice. But Paul is saying, as much as I've done it, I'm the Jew, I'm the Hebrew, but I'm saying the true circumcision is through the Spirit. So the Lord is talking about the true circumcision, the spiritual circumcision, that you ought to be circumcised through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. You ought to be circumcised, to be filled, to be endured with the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then you qualified to be regarded as someone who is spiritually what? Circumcised, whether male or female. Because your spiritual man has been entire, has been indwelled with the Holy Spirit. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. That is when that scripture will apply to you. That it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. Because you have been set apart. Because you have been marked through the Spirit of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Da, 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 da. Oh, spiritual circumcision is what the Lord is talking about this morning. Hallelujah. Spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to be spiritually circumcised, meaning indwelled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. So I want to pray now, my brethren, for all those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the time for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you'll be marked, so that you'll be spiritually circumcised and be set apart for God to use you as he pleases. And once you are spiritually circumcised, you are marked with the Holy Spirit, then you will know what you are called to do, what you were born to do. What is your assignment according to God's plan? But it is important, impossible for you to know what you are called to do if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So I want everybody to raise their hands and close your eyes. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for all those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, O God, I pray, Father God, that you fill them right now. Fill them up, Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God, fill them up, fill them up. Fill them up. Indwell them right now and baptize them in the Holy Ghost. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. Release your power. Release your fire. Right now, touch them wherever they are, O God. Fill them, O God. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Receive it, receive it, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Those who have received your power, Lord, we seal it by the blood of Jesus. We seal the indwelling of